Hi there, Vijay this side from ThinkSage and I welcome you in this 10x job search masterclass in which we're going to learn about six steps formula to get multiple interview calls within 30 days. So this is one of the sessions that I conducted for hundreds of students who have attended our masterclass in which I have shared everything from cultivating the right mindset to learn how do you leverage your network how do you ask for referrals uh, in between every step included such as you know how do you work on your resume how do you apply for less number of companies and yet get more number of job shortlists how do you work on your personal branding and uh, like how do you create a career clarity statement for yourself so that you have an absolute clarity about where do you want to get next in your career uh, which kind of job sh should you be applying what kind of people you should be networking with so this is a session which is going to take close to a couple of hours and if you attend this session completely till the very end your job source is going to be totally different you'll have a completely different understanding of how your job source is going to go from where you are right now where you're struggling to get jobs to you start getting multiple interview calls but i have a very very important request for all of you unless you are committed to invest at least two hours of your time, please do not start watching the session because unless you are watching the session through and through till the very end, this session is not going to help you by any means because each and every learning, each and every um, uh, the, the job search hack that I'm going to give in the session is going to be interconnected and they are going to make sense only when they are applied, uh, put together. Okay. And in this session, everything is going to be action oriented. What do I mean by that is that it's not going to be a session in which I'm going to just say things and you're going to just listen through and through. Okay. It's going to be a session in which I'm going to ask you to do some certain exercises. And once you have done those exercises, you will go step by step closure to your next interview call. Okay. Um, so I want you to watch this session with full intent and please have a pen and a paper, a proper notebook ready so that you can make as many notes as you can while watching the session. Let's get started. Okay, so first, see, I'll I'll take you from like end to end, you know, from scratch till where where you need to be as far as your own job source is concerned. Okay, um, so first of all, I mean, uh, why typically people look for job source? It's a it's a no brainer, by the way. I mean, either uh, you have graduated from your college or you are looking to make a uh, switch because you're not happy with your current role, or you think that you know your dream job job opportunity is somewhere else. You know, you wanted to work always at a, at a different place. So I was having a conversation yesterday with one of uh, one of our student. Um, his name is Satya. And this guy says that, you know, his dream was to always work with Tiger Analytics. And this is where he wanted to become an, a data analytics consultant. So in similar fashion, you also might be having a similar kind of um, an experience. Okay. And if, uh, so when this happens, you know, when this happens, what typically people do is that they get triggered uh, to create profiles on I mean, they create resume, they create LinkedIn profile and create profiles on job board and start applying for jobs one by one. Okay. Um, and typically this is what it follows. You know, I'll just maybe quickly summarize it. Okay. So typically what follows is, is that people apply for uh, jobs on Nokri, Monster, Glassdoor, Indeed, or similar other portals where the job opportunities are available. Some of the people also I know, keep on actively writing interested or please review my profile. These kind of comments on what the recruiter has to put in or what the hiring manager has to put in on the LinkedIn uh, when they are putting those posts for direct hiring via LinkedIn. Okay. Then a lot of people do cold emailing as well. Cold emailing is still very effective, by the way. I mean, although it's an old school technique, but uh, there are a lot of people who are doing cold emailing. And a lot of people are dropping resumes on company pages. Okay. Uh, for example, you know, if let's say Amazon says that they're hiring maybe, um, um, let's say a quality engineer. So, so you're going to go to Amazon's space and put your resume so that they kind of can review your resume. Then a lot of people also get calls with consultants. So this is typically, this typically happens with people who have more experience, like more than six, seven years of experience. They get calls from consultants because consultant's job is to connect you with the company that is hiring. Okay. Uh, then there are people who also create paid accounts. Paid accounts are almost everywhere nowadays. So, so if you go to Nokri, if you go to LinkedIn, everywhere there are paid accounts. They give you more visibility. They give you more ideas about 
where your application is lacking. Okay. And then there are job fairs. I think job fairs might not be relevant here because it is typically relevant more for the people who are freshers. Uh, so now I want you guys to write in the comment box, which all, like uh, how many practice, how many of these practices have you guys tried so far? How many of these practices you guys have tried so far? Can you guys give me some number? Maybe, you know, one, two, three, four, what are their number is? Can you give me that number? Like, what is what is that number? One, two, three, four. Can I, guys, can I get a particip participation here? Okay, Vidya says four. Okay. How about other people? Guys, we'll have to, we'll have to participate. It's going to be interactive. Okay, I'm telling you, operand, it's going to be interactive. And unless it is interactive, you guys will not be able to make a lot of sense of what, what, what we are learning here. Except writing interested. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I, I, I'm really happy that, you know, you did not resort to writing interested. Thank uh, Ansh is all. How about, how about other options, guys? I mean, uh, how about other people? Can, can I get a quick, quick, quick clarity from there? Guys, you'll have to participate. Unless you're participating, I'm not going to move ahead. I'm very clear on this. Okay. Moza says two, Rakesh says five. Okay. So lastly, if I look at what we have here is that people have people have people have tried almost all of these kind of options, but the problem here is that uh, I mean uh, it is difficult to get job shortlist if if I, you know, kind of put it in this way in the market, if it is difficult to get these job shortlist and I'll tell you the reason for it, why, why this is the case. Okay. Uh, the, the problem here is that if you look at the job market set for, let's say maybe 10 years back, 12 years back, back then people used to stay in the companies for long. I mean, people used to stay in the companies for at least on average six years, six years. Okay. And that the same number from six years has come down in 2023 to almost three years, around three, three point one, three point two years. Okay. From six years to uh, two, three years, it is almost like half the number of number of years people are staying in the companies. Now, what does that mean? That means that the flow of people in the job market has doubled. Okay. It has increased. Uh, so it has, it has increased to twice. And now, now the problem with that approach is, um, the problem with this thing is that while the job jobs in the market has increased, uh, you know, uh, incrementally, uh, the people in the market has increased um, exponentially. One, because there are more number of people in the market. Number two, applying for jobs has become super easy. Super easy. You know, if you go to LinkedIn, you can do a quick apply. You can apply for 30, 40, 50 jobs in just one hour of time. You can do the same in knockery.com. You can do the same, same in uh, Glassdoor, uh, Indeed, any any place you go. It, it, is, it has become super easy for people to apply the jobs. Now, what do we do? Um, because of that, because of that, what is happening is that people have now started up deploying different strategies and people are directly reaching out to recruiters, people are directly reaching out to hiring managers. And people are so connected nowadays that even before the job is posted online, they are able to reach out to the company, to the team, and they are able to get that opportunity beforehand. And what is that resulting in is that, uh, what is that resulting in is that almost like some 15, 20% of these opportunities so the, the opportunity block that you are seeing on these job portals is just like 15, 20% of the total jobs available out there. 80% of the jobs are actually getting filled from the opportunities, uh, from, from the methods, which are not actually listed here. And which is where, which is where, uh, all of these options that I've shown to you guys here, they are not enough. I mean, they're not enough for you to, um, to, to, to make a mark to you to kind of, you know, start getting those opportunities quicker and more in nature. Okay. So, uh, which is where I, I realized that, you know, what we need to do is that we need to kind of maybe take a step back and look at how do we kind of solve this problem? Okay. Which is what we're going to do this in today's session. I'll just quickly close this piece. Um, so I've broken down this session into six different categories. Okay. First is the mindset. Why mindset? Because applying for jobs is difficult. Okay. 
applying for jobs is super difficult. The reason is that it involves managing rejections. And managing rejection is something that we as humans are not really good at. Okay, that's point number one. Then many a time the stress, the anxiety, the problem with the mind, the 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 uh, job search comes from not having a clarity in your career. Okay, like what do you want to do? I mean, you are looking at an opportunity, you see that, okay, this is a job from Google, Let, let's apply for it. Or, okay, this is a job from this great company, okay, let's apply for it. Even though I am not made up for, made for that, that, that job opportunity. Uh, I mean, uh, it is imp equally important for all of us to not just uh, understand like where, where, or, where all should I be applying, but also we should also know where all we should not be applying. Okay, what all we should not be doing to preserve the energy. Uh, throughout our job search okay then how do we automate our job search that that so that's an ex extremely important part of it and then how do we get more shortlist by applying for less number of companies okay how do we get more job shortlist by applying to less number of companies then finally um, is there a way i can the the recruiters the uh you know the people who are hiring they can reach out to me directly is there a way i can you know optimize things on my profile followed by how do you network with people I see a lot of people sending messages, sending, you know, a connection request to other people on LinkedIn. And that's it. That's it. I mean, that's that's their relationship with those people, a dead relationship. Okay. I tell you, I teach you exactly how do you have deep and meaningful relationship with people so that they can vouch for you when you are looking for a job, when you are applying for a job opportunities in their own company, in their own circle. Okay. So I'm going to talk about all of these five, six things. Uh, that I've just listed on here one by one, uh, and let's 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 get started with the mindset exercise. Okay. Okay. I want all of you guys to have a pen and paper ready because unless that pen and paper is there, uh, unless that pen and paper is there, just give me a second. Uh, you'll not be able to make, uh, I mean, you'll not be able to take a lot of, a lot of notes. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. We'll, we'll get started with the, with the mindset exercise. So the activity that we have for today is on your notebook. Do not write anything on common box. On your notebook, please write what is the percentage hike that you're looking for from your current salary with the new job that you're trying to apply for. Okay. It's a confidential information that is specific to you only. So please write it in on, on your notebook. So what is the percentage hike that you're looking for? Okay. I hope all of you guys have written that in your notebook. Now, the second piece that I want you to write is on your notebook, right below that number, I said, what is your lifestyle goal? When I say lifestyle goal, it could be anything. I mean, it could be um, that you wanted to be in a destination, you know, a, a dream destination that you always wanted to be, but you can't go because of some, uh, you know, obligations, some responsibilities that you have, or maybe, you know, purely because of your financial condition, you cannot go there, or it could be anything else as well. I mean, there are multiple things like, uh, I mean... Uh, did uh, so so did you always want to be want want to have a dream home you know where you and your family can stay together okay um i mean you always uh, lived uh maybe you know house to house because you did not have uh, that opportunity at your place and you think that this is something that your parents would admire the most or right or it could be Something else, you know, there was um, a candidate who had joined, uh, I think, a, a session a few months back. Uh, what she mentioned actually shook me. What she told me is that, you know, her father, her father, you know, uh, who is in his 50s, he's, he still goes to his office on a bike. Okay. And um, while he went to his office every single day on a bike, he made sure that, you know, uh, his kids are given the best education and his kids get the best opportunities that are available in the market and they are not left behind. And uh, uh, in that process, he obviously compromised on a lot of things that he would have wanted at, you know, at first place. You know, he would have wanted to have a car for himself, but he did not do so. He would have wanted to have maybe a different convenience for himself. He did not do so. Why? Because he thought that the education 
and the upbringing of his kids is extremely important now now the girl sees that you know it is her responsibility and it is her dream to make sure that you know he gets a car of his own uh, gets a gets a car of his own uh, so that he doesn't have to wait uh, below the bridges every time there is a rain when he is going to an office okay okay i mean uh, this is not a made up story okay this is not a made up story i'm saying this because you know if if any if any of you are um if any of you know about mumbai in mumbai the rains can be very incessant i mean uh, if you look at the july august and september uh, month and during that time so i mean the rains can go on for days and days and days right so uh, so so that's a very strong lifestyle goal okay in, in similar case you you might have a different kind of use case okay you might have a different kind of cause for which you want to do it okay in my case i'm a book reader if you go to my good read uh, page you will see that i'm reading 25 24 25 24 books every single year okay and maybe i would want to have a library someday okay so that i can inspire other people also to read more books right so in your case if you have a lifestyle goal and it doesn't matter if uh, so do not think think about anything like you know it is materialistic all of those things it's all crap okay if you want to have maybe an iphone 15 pro max that's also fine that's completely up to you okay so please write that lifestyle goal on your um note and if you guys have done this exercise so far please write done in the comment box remember this exercise is important to set up a strong foundation okay if you have if you've done this please write a done in the comment box As this is important to it, it's it's extremely important to complete this exercise. Okay, so please write done if you have done these two exercises. How much percentage hike do you want, and what is the lifestyle? What is the lifestyle goal? When it says done, done. Okay, cool. How about the people? You know, I've just heard from just three people. You know, I I need the answers from more people. So because we have to get this right. Unless we get this right in our head, it's going to be difficult to follow. Please write it down in the comment box if you guys are done with, with these two exercises so far. Okay. Okay, I've gotten a like, fair amount of answers here. Now, I have a question for, for all of you. Okay, please uh, focus here and think for a minute. And uh, let me know. Uh, like, the percentage hike that you are um, uh, targeting, do you think this is enough for your lifestyle goal? Do you think that's enough? Please write a yes or a no in the comment box. Please write a yes in the, or, or, or a no in the comment box. Do you think that percentage hike is enough to meet your lifestyle goals? The ambitious goals that you've kept for yourself. When it says no, Mursa says no. No, okay. No, okay. And says yes, okay. Cool. I think I've got a fair amount of answers here, a fair number of answers here. So what happens is, and I've been doing this exercise for some time now. I mean, uh, and, and I get similar kind of answers. It's it's like almost 70 to 80 percent people say no, and there are some 15, 20 percent people say yes, okay. And uh, so I'll quickly talk about why there is a gap, you know, why there's a gap between um, what exactly we want as far as our, our life to be or where, where do we want to reach versus, uh, versus, you know, what our career goal is like. Okay. I mean, it's like, so I want to live a certain kind of a lifestyle, but to meet that lifestyle, okay, to sustain that lifestyle, you know, to be there in that lifestyle, I'm not targeting a kind of a career or time. I'm, I'm not targeting enough money for that uh, to meet that lifestyle goal. Okay. And it's okay. I mean, it, it's it's not a fault or anything of that sort. Okay. That's the reason we are here. We are here to correct it. Okay. Um, so it's like this, I'll tell you. Um, I mean, from our from the front of our head, you know, from from you know, if 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 I ask anybody here that, you know, uh, do you want a hundred percent hike on your salary? Everybody will say yes. Okay, everybody will say yes, thank you so much. And definitely I would want 100 percent hike on my, my current salary. Okay. But at the same time, um 
if the conversation if, if this entire discussion kind of you know flipped flipped in a different fashion what is that different fashion if i flip it in a way and say that what height do you want on your current salary uh, you would agree with me on this fact that 9 out of 10 people will not have the courage to say that i want a 100% height okay so when a recruiter is saying i am willing to give you 100% height everybody is taking it but when recruiter says that you know what is the percentage height that you are looking for nobody has that courage to say that i am looking for a 100% height okay it's like something is pulling you off something is saying please please don't do that that that's wrong you know you cannot do that right and i just want to correct it and and i'll tell you exactly how we can correct this piece okay um now so why is there a gap first so before doing anything we need to understand why why there is a gap we consciously want to make money we consciously want to upgrade our lifestyles we consciously want to make sure that we are we are at a better place right but at the same time something is pulling us off subconsciously something is pulling us off and what is that pulling us off uh, many times we think that you know the people who have done well for themselves they are privileged and they are disconnected from the hardship of daily life right i mean if you go to instagram if you go to facebook if you see the post of some of those people who have done extremely well for themselves a lot of hate comments you will see i mean you will see that people are saying that you know what does he know about you know how difficult a life is what does he know about uh, poverty and all of those kind of comments even when that person is a self made guy okay and many time we believe that wealth creation happens via and fame means only i mean the moment we hear words such as let's say adani or ambani immediately we start linking that with corruption linking start start linking that with politics start linking that with something that is actually um you know uh, that is something to, something to do with maybe you know we not doing well right despite we so despite the fact that we don't even know what exactly are these people doing is this uh, i mean uh, have they genuinely worked on something or is there a, is there really a problem okay we we consciously believe that you know wealth creation happens by and by means and sometimes it is in our culture and upbringing as well i mean from our childhood we are told that lalas puri bala hai i mean the greed is not good right we have always been taught like this you know whenever uh, somebody gives you money you know in the, in the relatives and all please take your hands back right something of that what we have been told if you go to our movies if you look at you know everything that is happening in cinema and everywhere else as well you will see that most of the time that poor guy is the hero in 70s and 80s movies okay the person who is working in a mill that mill owner the fat guy is the villain okay and the poor guy uh, that that mill worker speaks to him in a very condescending language as if he already knew that this mill guy was a corrupt guy okay so somewhere you know in our upbringing in our socialist upbringing we have been taught that you know uh, money is the root of all evil okay uh, upgrading ourselves is not good okay now the problem here is that this is something that is lying in our subconscious okay so when you are applying for a job when you are applying for maybe an opportunity when you are thinking of let's say making a promotion from your current role to a different role when you are making for a switch a considerable switch it always requires you to make, to, to to make a mindset shift mindset shift okay and that mindset shift can only happen if both of these things both of these things your uh your uh, uh if if i look at your i mean your subconscious mind or your conscious mind both of these things have to be um at one place i mean it can never be the case that your conscious mind wants you to be at some place and and your subconscious mind is pulling you back if these two are working in opposite directions then it is likely that you will not be able to move from there to a different place where you always wanted to be both of these two have to be aligned okay now i'll uh, tell you exactly how you can align both of these things to be at same place okay i just wanted to give you this perspective because this is extremely important um because many a time what i see what people do is that you know I, so they attend sessions like this they are fully motivated that um, i'll definitely get a different job now and after 6 7 days after a week two weeks of time they are again at the same place where they were before right so now what what does it take to raise your financial and success thermostat this is extremely important okay so the first point that is important here is first point that is important here is that please write your goals very very clearly okay just focus on this important piece 
I'll tell you step by step on how do you work on your mindset. Okay. Please write your goals very clearly. When I say write your goals very clearly, exact number, like, like what do you want to become? And do you want to become a like senior marketing manager, marketing head? Do you want to become a senior software engineer? A lot of people said, you know, somebody said that he, he is from the quality background here. Right. I think Murtaza said he is from quality background and let's say he wants to become a quality lead. Then that has to be written here. Do not focus right now on how it will happen. I'll tell how. But right now is the time to focus on what. Okay. Like what do you want to become? Senior software engineer. Where do you want to be? Uh, like uh, do that job. You want to do that in leading tech company. Okay. And what exactly is the range in which you want to want? So this has to be a number which is like an average figure in that salary. Uh, in that, in that uh, salary range for that industry. And what is the time horizon in which you are targeting this? Okay. Again, if you look at this piece also, it, it also says the same thing, like to become a digital marketing manager with the aim of developing marketing campaigns while earning in the range of 50, 20, 25 lakhs in the next six months, exact role, exact kind of work, exact amount of money and exact time frame in which you want to do that. Okay. So please, uh, write your goal very, very clearly. It has to be very, very specific, direct without even thinking too much about how it will happen. Okay. How comes later? Many times we think about how first and this how strangles this word and we forget about what. Okay. That's your career goal. I would call it as uh, maybe career goal. Okay. Career goal. Once you have written this career goal, the problem with career goals is, I mean, this is where I'm just uh, giving you an answer of exactly a problem, a, a thought process that you might have in your head. The problem with career goals is that you'll write a career goal right now. And after three or four days, after a week or at max two weeks of time, you'll even forget about what you had written in that paper, a piece of paper. That's the problem. Now, how do we solve this problem? Okay. How do we solve this problem? Uh, if you just write a career goal, it's not going to take you anywhere. Okay. Because we are not attuned to take our career goals. Uh, I mean, the way we write it. And that's the reason we need to link this career goal with something called as a lifestyle goal. Something that is tangible, something that we can touch, feel, right? When you do that, when you kind of, you know, attach it with something tangible, that is where, that is where you, you, you etch. So you create your own itch in your head that you need to meet that career goal. Many times people who are on career break, their career break keeps on getting, um, you know, um, elongated. So it keep on getting uh, stretched. And one of the biggest reason for that is that they don't have something very tangible to kind of look at. Mostly they look at, okay, this is what I want to do. And then uh, there's not a real itch for them to make sure that, you know, this career goal is materialized. Okay. And career goals, like, like I mentioned, you know, uh, so the lifestyle goal, like I mentioned, has to be something like this, you know, whatever is, is the thing that you wanted to do, like visiting five different countries in the next five years, doing the average base camp, something of that sort. Okay, it could be something else as well. The way I talked about some causes and everything in, in, in the first part, part of this mindset exercise. Okay, when you combine these two things, your uh, something tangible, some your, your lifestyle goal with your career goal, that is where this career goal, goal becomes a very important target for you. Okay, number three now. Okay, number three now, this is the biggest learning from this entire exercise is that please mind your surroundings. Please mind your surroundings. Okay. You'll have people around you. Some people will say that, you know, um, some, I would not say some, but most of the people would say that, you know, you cannot do it. You are better off with whatever you are doing right now. Okay. I mean, why take that risk? Okay. Or I would maybe put it in a different way. I put it in a different way. Uh, let's say uh, somebody said, I mean, I'll just maybe take another example from one of the chats here. Just give me a second. Okay. Huh. Um, Vidya said that she is a lead tech recruiter. Okay. Uh, now let's say Vidya wants to get into learning and development. I'm just saying, okay. Vidya says that, you know, maybe the recruiter part is not something that is working out because uh, there are a lot of people who are in, in the recruitment now, which have been laid off. And I think it's, it's an overcrowded market and Vidya, let's say wants to get into learning and development, but the problem is that Vidya always hangs out with people who are recruiters only. Day in and day out. The problem with that approach is that when you do that, you will always have a mindset of a recruiter, not of a person who is a learning and development guy. 
okay same goes with other people as well you know uh, somebody said that you know he is um, you know he he is from a telecommunication industry and now naturally the the, the circle of rakesh is going to be on telecommunication side okay if rakesh still reads telecommunication stuff still hangs out with people who are in tele telecommunication then it's going to be different to switch into it because the mindset required to be in it is very different than that of mindset required to be in telecommunication okay so please mind your surroundings i mean uh, start networking with people who are in exactly in in your domain who are exactly working on the same role as you are targeting uh, targeting to work upon let's say you are a business analyst you want to become product manager instead of hanging out with pro people who are product managers so business analyst please start hanging out with people who are product managers okay make yourself more visible when i say make yourself more visible um, this is one of the biggest mistake that i made when i was working in tcs at when i started my career you know i uh, i uh, it's not that i did not work hard i worked super hard work, super hard i worked like 13 to 14 hours a day when i was working in tcs um hoping that you know everything else is going to be taken care of by my manager a result for four years i got a, an average 3 uh, 3% hike that too on a cdc you know when i started working in uh, tcs i started with a salary of 3.16 lakh rupees imagine getting a 3% hike on a 3.16 lakh rupees cdc it's terrible Okay, I have more than I think six, seven x of that CTC. You know, once I, I was, I, you know, I I got into product management. I got into leading some of the teams, and even then, I had an year-on-year -year percentage hike of more than around fifteen percent at times. Okay, uh, you know what is the one single mistake that I made here? The the biggest mistake that I made there was that I assumed that the hard work alone is going to take care of everything that I'm doing here. Okay, so this hard work alone is never enough. This hard work has to be coupled by how do you showcase that hard work to the people who are the decision makers in your own use case. If you are looking to make a promotion, then please make sure that this hard work is visible to a person who is a decision maker in your company. If you are making a career switch, for which we are here right now in this session, right? Then this hard work has to be visible to the recruiters, to the hiring managers who are hiring for that role. And how do you make that visible? You know, maybe you update your LinkedIn profile. Maybe you you maybe you start writing something about that that specific piece. That you know, this is something something that you have worked upon. Maybe you showcase that on on your on your profile in such a way that it is visible to more and more number of people. Okay, so please mind your surroundings. That's extremely important. And one of the biggest reason, you know, uh, I so I'll, I'll I'll give you a very short story here. I'll give you a very very short story here. Um, in my last employment at Access Bank, I joined the company uh, as a senior product manager in the uh, in October 2020, uh, October 2020. Okay. It was precisely the 13th of October 2020. Okay. And typically in access bank from a product manager, product manager is an individual contributor role to leading a team to becoming a product lead. This is typically a four to five years of journey. Okay. In my case, I got promoted from the senior product manager to product lead, uh, in just two years and three months of time. Just 27 months of time itself, despite the fact that there, there, there are a lot of people who are more senior than me in my team. Okay, so I spoke with my manager. I told him that you know uh, what led him to uh, so when he because he was shifting to a different company, I uh, so a different role. Uh, so I asked him that you know what led him to uh, recommend me for the product lead position, and even though there were more number of people who were there in the team, and uh, his answer was very simple he, he told that you know whenever i was not around i saw that you were taking the responsibility of making sure that you know you were leading the scrum uh, discussions you were having discussions with the business people you were having discussions with the compliance risk all of those people you are making sure that my manager is managed up management is happening effectively and there are no escalations that are going to uh, um, to the up management right so uh i had already assumed that responsibility of of working as a product lead uh, even though I was not a product lead, right? So what happens is that, you know, when you mind your surroundings, when you start having conversation with people who are exactly in that role, that is where you start developing a mindset of, of that particular role, right? So it's extremely important for you to mind your surroundings. That's point number three. And point number four is please have an investment mindset. When I say investment, investment can be of two types. Okay. One is time. Second is money. Okay. Both are extremely important. I'll tell you why why am i kind of focusing upon this okay um see what happens is from your x role to a y role let's say organically you are reaching in maybe you know let's say uh three years okay 
So let's say you are reaching there in three years. Now what happens is, uh, there is there is a shortcut. Let's say you know, the the shortcut is that you know you take a course, you take a certification, you do an internship, or maybe you make a career switch, which is going to take you there in just maybe six or six to eight months of time. Okay, then then that's the shortcut that you, that you need to take every single day. Now that shortcut can come in two different ways. One, you 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 decide to invest your time into networking with such people into maybe doing such courses, right? Or you decide to invest your money in making sure that you are getting the right qualification to be there. Okay. Uh, I mean, it can come in any kind of form, you know, be it, uh, be it, you know, you taking some sort of a course from a Udemy or co taking some course from, let's say maybe Coursera or from maybe let's say you doing some sort of a cohort based course uh, that is being organized by someone else. Okay. That's up to you. But the point is that you need to have an investment mindset that will Tell so your back of the mind that yes, you are ready to take this responsibility. Yes, you deserve this responsibility. Okay. So just to quickly summarize on this piece, I took a little more time than that of that is required here because I think mindset is extremely important that you need to write the career goals very, very effectively. You need to, because when you write the goal, when you look at the goal every single day, your back of the mind, your subconscious mind become trained. Your subconscious mind starts thinking about that, that this is the goal that I need to have. This is my reality. Okay. And then you link that goal with something tangible. You mind your surroundings to have a positive mindset and have an investment mindset. Okay. These four things are extremely important if you want to make a career switch. Okay. And just quickly, uh, maybe some uh, minimize this because I've taken a lot of time uh, in, in kind of talking about mindset piece because it is important. Now I'll shift to career clarity. Okay. Career clarity. Why am I talking about career, career clarity here is why am I talking about career clarity here is I'll give, maybe I'll give you a quick uh, example. Okay. Back in 2018, uh, 2019, by the way, um, I got an opportunity from uh, MasterCard, you know, from MasterCard, the hiring manager called me and said that they're looking to hire a senior product manager. And uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys are from financial services background. Um, senior product management role in MasterCard is a big deal big deal i mean it's a it's a it's a, it's a huge stuff i mean i i was like uh, i mean i was so pumped that i i thought i mean i'll have to do everything in my capacity to make sure that i'm cracking this role okay i prepared everything i learned about everything that i could i i possibly could i revised and i did all of these activities and then on that uh interview day i visited their office um because i wanted to make sure that you know i'm visiting i'm making my best impression on the hiring manager okay so I visited their office in Bandra Kurla Complex, BKC uh, in Mumbai. And the first question that the hiring manager asked me was, uh, I'll just quickly maybe show it to you how, how the conversation went. He asked me that, Vijay, why don't you tell me about yourself? Okay. And my answer goes like this. Hi, uh, my name is Vijay and I work as a product manager in Motion Acquiring Team of Access, uh, of, of, of US Bank. And uh, I'm working on a product that will help us in uh, producing the turnaround time of merchant onboarding from seven days to, uh, to uh, seven minutes. Um, he was impressed. Okay. Then I kept on talking. Okay. I kept on adding few more things. Then I said that I also work uh, in creating sales enablements for my sales team so that they can sell more and more products. Then he stops me. He says, okay, so you worked as a program manager. I said, no, no, no. That's an additional responsibility I was working upon. Then I said that I also make sure that the people who are in our portfolio, the customers that, who are in our portfolio, they are all profit-making customer uh, customers. And um, so I work on uh, weeding out the people who are loss-making for us and retaining customers who are profit-making for us. And this guy says, so, okay, so you are a portfolio manager. I said, no, no, no I'm not a portfolio manager. I'm a product manager only, but these are the additional activities that I've been doing. I thought I'm impressing that person. Okay. And the conversation just goes like this and I confuse the hell out of that guy. Okay. And within 10 minutes, the interview was over. Right. I mean, can you tell like, what was the mistake in this conversation? What was the mistake that I, did I made in that interview? Can anyone tell? Can anyone tell what was the mistake did I uh, uh, make in this conversation? Can anyone tell what was what was the mistake that I make in this session? Make, make made in this interview hall. Guys, you have to participate. 
the session is actually going pretty dull. Okay. Give extra info which was not in the resume. Okay, then I mean, isn't a lot of time interviewers also ask for like what is there? Can can you tell something that is not in your resume? Telling multiple responses instead of in four. I think Murtaza is spot on here. See, if it's a it's an interview of different rules involved other than the main. Okay. Somewhat right. So see, if the interview is about product management, then why on earth would I focus on the things that are not even relevant? Okay. So it's all about, it's all about, you know, you clearly talking about something that, that, that is being asked that, that is relevant to the hiring manager or the recruiter. That's it. I mean, if you talk about things that are not relevant, then what is going to happen is that you're not impressing those people. You are actually confusing them. You're saying that, you know, this person is not really interested in product management. He's doing X number of things. Okay. He, I mean, he might shift to a different thing altogether. Uh, if something else is given to him. Now, the point that I'm trying to say here is that, see, when you're appearing for job jobs, okay, when you're appearing for interviews, when you're applying for jobs, it's not the quantity of things that matter. It's the quality and it's how in-depth you are in that particular activity matters the most. Okay, so I'm going to give you a framework which is going to help you in finding that career, uh, career clarity. Okay, so please write in your notebook exactly the way I'm telling here. Okay, and then you will see that framework coming out automatically. First point is salutation. Okay. So I'm also writing it with you. Okay, just give me a second, guys. Okay, so let's write this statement. My name is I'm gonna write my name, you write your name, okay? Okay, let's let's write it in this way. This is the first line. Second line is gonna be on, and then we will focus on the framework. How does this framework work? Is if you have an experience in a field and you want to continue your work in that field, then write it in this way. I am a, um, quality analyst. Okay. Or let's say somebody said that he is a marketing manager. Okay. Somebody said that he is into, I think, let me just quickly go through, go back. Did analyst. We can say I am. Oh, data analyst. I'm a data analyst. Okay. Now, but if you, if you are new to that field, okay, you are making a complete career switch, then you can put it in this way. I am a marketing. You can be more specific here. Okay. You can say that, you know, I am a digital marketing enthusiast. That, that is more specific. Okay. Or it could be something else as well. You know, it, it, I am a coding enthusiast. Like this. Okay. Or it could be, uh, I am, a, in my case, if I'm looking for a product management role, I would write it as I'm a product management enthusiast. In this, in the, so in this way. Okay. Okay, so write exactly like who you are. That's the second line. Third line is uh, in whatever domain or function that you are doing it. And if you know function, that's great. Otherwise, domain is also fine. It could be like in financial services. Okay, and it could be in telecom. Okay, this could be one, and it could be in telecom, or it could be healthcare. Okay. It's up to you, like what do you want to write here? Or it could be 
uh, let's say maybe product based id companies or service based id companies that, that that's up to you or if you know function that is also fine like in marketing is a function to a function right or sorry okay or it could be supply chain okay or it could be uh, uh i mean uh, design okay so it's it's up to you like which function you are trying to get into okay uh, please write it, the domain and after writing the domain please mention what is the location which you are trying to get hired when I say location, you need to make sure that this look, even if let's say you are open to get hired in any location that you want, you need to write a specific location. That is important. I tell you the reason for it. For uh, let's say I maybe I, I would write as Mumbai location. Okay, because I'm based out of Mumbai. Okay. Why this is important is that see when typically recruiters hire, I'll show something to you. Just give me a second. I'll make sure my screen. I'll show something to you. Just give me a second, guys. Okay. So, assume that this is a LinkedIn recruiter's view for a minute. Okay. And data scientist. If I put put it here as data scientist, then it's gonna be it's it's gonna show me uh, the list of people here. Okay. Okay. Now, if I see here, it is giving me around some six lakh sixty six thousand people. Although the most relevant ones are going to be at the top, but still, I mean, it's difficult to find people from this kind of a result set, right? So the one of the first filter that typically people put in here is of the location that they're trying to get hired for. So in my case, it is Mumbai. I'm going to put it as Mumbai. Okay. So it's going to become something like this. Only 1700 results. So this location acts as one of the filters, one of the key filters for people to uh, short, I mean, uh, make a uh, smaller list of candidates. Okay, so this this filter is extremely important, uh, and and if that is the case, then you cannot afford to say that you know I'll work anywhere in India, any anywhere in the country, okay, or anywhere in Canada. Okay, you'll have to mention a specific location for which you want to get hired, because otherwise you won't be there in that list of those people. Typically, uh, the recruiters are able to find out. I mean, it, at least in nine out of ten cases, they're able to find out people from this this list itself. Okay, um, I mean, when you say anywhere in India, you are asking. I mean you are basically saying nowhere in India. Okay. So you need to put in that detail, like from, for which location you are trying to get hired. Okay. And last is in what kind of companies it could be in startups or it could be in large companies. It's, it, it's, it's up to you and it's okay to work in either of these companies. Okay. Everybody has different kind of rights for different kind of working. So it's okay to work in either of these companies. Okay. Now, this statement is going to read something like this. I mean, you'll be amazed to see that how smooth this statement can, kind of you know, comes out. Okay. Um, maybe if, if I would read this statement, probably for me, it is going to come out something like this. Hi, my name is Vijay Chandura. I am, let me just maybe remove all of these items also here. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Sorry. Now, I'm going to go through it again. It is going to come out something like this. Hi, my name is Vijay Chandura. I'm a marketing manager in financial services looking to get hired from Mumbai location uh, in startups. Okay, it's speak about something very specific. Like, hi, my name is Vijay Chandura. I'm a marketing manager in financial services domain and I'm looking to get hired for Mumbai location in startups. See how clear, crisp, very, very, you know, uh, to the point this entire things. So this has to be a elevator pitch. This has to be a filter that you're applying uh, when you are looking for jobs, okay. When you are looking to network with the kind of people that you want to network with, okay. Um, when you are, uh, maybe, you know, um, automating a job search, this has to be a filter, which will help you in making sure that you are only applying for relevant job opportunities, which are suiting your strength. Okay. Uh, if you guys have also done this, please write a done in the comment box. Please write it down in the comment box if you guys have been able to create this statement.
or if you have any questions, I can take the questions as well on this specific framework because we have to get this framework right. Can I get a yes, no on this? Done? Okay. So, uh, Vijay, in that case, you'll have to put it as remote. I mean, instead of putting up a location, you'll put it as remote. You're looking to get hired for a remote role. That's fine. Remote slash work from home role. That's okay. Cool. And there's a good, so, so it is good that there are a lot of companies that are hiring for remote roles nowadays, right? specifically on the new job portals that have come across, such as WeWork remotely in all these companies. There are a lot of companies that are looking at maybe, you know, people who can work on contract, people who can work on remote roles, people who can work on, um, you know, short-term assignments. And I mean, it is, it has become very flexible in that sense. Okay, cool. Uh, perfect. So, so, we, so I'm going to come back to this career clarity statement again and again. I'll show exactly how this thing kind of you know, works out. I'll just, just give me a second. I'll just quickly minimize this piece. Okay. Now I'll shift our focus from career clarity to automating your job search. Okay. See, automation is extremely important in today's context. The reason is uh, applying for jobs that I feel is like one of the most wasteful exercise. Okay, and why I say this is a most wasteful exercise is because it doesn't add to your intellectual curiosity. Okay, it doesn't add to anything as far as your own career is concerned. Okay, so when I say this, um, I mean, see, if you work on your resume, if you work on your refining your resume pointers, yes, this helps you in getting a clarity on what exactly have you done in your career, right? If you do a certification, it is giving you some functional knowledge, right? If, when you are going through this session, you are learning something as far as your own job search is concerned. But when you just mindlessly apply, 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 search, search, apply, 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 it is not going to give you anything. Okay. It's just waste of time. That's the reason I said that, you know, we need to automate our, jo automate our job searches. Okay. Now, how do we automate our job search? That, that's extremely important. Uh, First, I'm going to tell you a tool that I think a lot of you people will already be knowing, but you don't know how to use it in the most effective fashion. I'm going to teach you that. Okay. So go to your browser and open a link that, that, I'm, giving, uh, that I'm giving you here. Okay. Okay. Just give me a second. So this is the link that you need to open. For people who are outside India, they can just put it as google.com slash alerts. Okay. So open this alert. Okay. And then what you can do is, what you can do is on this, so you need to have a Gmail account, by the way. Okay. Gmail account is extremely important. Now, what you can do is that on this bar, just please, uh, this bar start writing exactly the role that you're looking for. Okay. In, in my case, probably I'm going to write it as product. Okay. Now, while this is great, but the problem with this approach is that Google search works in a different way. I mean, if I put product manager job, then it is going to give me results around product keyword also, manager keyword also, jobs also. So it could be any Tom Dickinary job, but it is going to be on my email. That's, that is what I don't want. Or it, if it's a manager job, it is going to give me there, right? Because they, I'm searching for manager keyword. And that's the reason what you need to do here is that use a Boolean search. And how do you do that is? Instead of writing this as product manager jobs, just put it as product plus manager plus jobs. Okay. And, and if you want to make sure that, you know, you are doing it for a specific location, for example, Vidya said that she is looking to get hired for remote role only. In that case, what she's going to put as is that it, it will be remote. Okay. It will be remote. Okay. Now what happens is that I'm going to go to show options. So while we have created this string here, I'm going to go to show options. And here, if I'm looking for a job on an immediate basis, then I'm going to put it as at most, change it from at most once a day to as it happens. Okay. Because I have the time and uh, space to kind of go through my email ID on a regular basis throughout the day and apply for jobs whenever I'm find, finding it there. 
But if you think that as it happens is something that is too much for you, it is going to spam your email box, then you can change it from that to at most once in a day. Okay. Now a reason for me, it is going to be India, but for other people, whichever reason that they're targeting, that's going to come here and then change this only the best results to all results. Why? Because right now Google doesn't know what is the best result for you. Let all results come to you on your email and you click it. And when you click on those uh, results, when you click on it, that is how the Google will learn that, okay, these are the results that are more relevant for this guy. Let us give us more results of these type. And that is where after a week or so, you can change it from all results to only the best results. Okay. But start with all results. And once you've done that, you can click on create alert. And this alert is going to save a lot of time for you. The reason is that instead of you going to all of these job portals one by one, it is going to send all of those uh, job opportunities on your email. And it is going to give you these opportunities on your email, even from those portals that you may not have even heard of it. Okay. Uh, so while it was not practically possible for you to go to each and every one of these portals, now you can get all of these opportunities on your email ID right there. Okay. Have you guys created this uh, alert? Alert? If if yes, then please write a yes in the comment box. Yes. Okay. Cool. How about other people? How about other people? How about other people? It's a simple activity, guys. You know, we'll we'll have to move a bit faster. Have you guys created an alert like this for your own specific use case? When it says yes. Okay. Okay. You can play around on this alert by the way. I mean, you can, you can make it even more specific. Okay. Very specific because, uh, you know, uh, if you go to my LinkedIn, I have, uh, uh, you know, after the session, I've literally created a detailed, uh, uh, video of around some six, seven minutes. Um, in which I've talked about in detail about how to create a Boolean query. Okay. But the idea here is that you need to automate your job search. Okay. Now I'll move from here to the next activity, which is the uh, uh, interview shortlist. Okay. Uh, now this is, if I would call it as far as job search is concerned, this is like one of the most critical, uh, critical, uh, step. Okay. Like how do you beat application tracking system to get more shortlist? And uh, there's a lot of buzz around application tracking system and all of those things. So I'm going to quickly talk about that piece as well. Okay. Now, uh, to get into the core of this, to, uh, of, of this problem, what I did is that I did a little bit of research here. Okay. I did a little bit of research here. First of all, I mean, why, why even ATS? Like why, why do you even bother about it exactly? Why is, why is this so important? So the first point here is that if, if you go by a CNBC report, it says that 75% of the resumes are never read by a human. Okay. And, uh, if I go from my personal experience of hiring people, I think this number for good companies is more than 90, 95%. That's what I would like to say. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, uh, we post, uh, so we, we put up a post of a LinkedIn, uh, so put up a post of a product owner on LinkedIn and we literally got around some 2100 applications in just like two weeks of time itself two weeks of time and 2100 applications. And that's the kind of competition that is out there in the market right now. But unfortunately, when we started going through these resumes, we realized that like almost eight out of 10 resumes were not even relevant. They did not have had the right kind of experience that we were looking for, despite me mentioning that in the job description very, very clearly. This is the, the problem with the recruiters nowadays. This is the problem with the hiring managers nowadays. That they are getting insane number of opportunities, uh, sorry, number of uh, resumes and it is practically impossible to go through each and every one of these resumes one by one. And that is the reason they deploy something called as ATS. And uh, I actually uh, you know, took up, took the pain of speaking with the people who are in Workday, Talio, ICMS, all of those companies. And I try to understand, you know, purely from shortlisting a candidate's perspective, what does ATS do? Okay. I mean, what is the logic that they have, the biggest logic that they have? And Almost everyone said, obviously, I mean, they give a lot of uh, tools and a lot of uh, ways of organizing data and a lot of uh, things that recruiters use for different, different kind of use cases, different, different kind of functions. 
But as far as shortlist and resume is concerned, the biggest thing that it did is that it 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 compared the keywords that are there in the resume with the keywords that were there in the job description. A very simple activity. Very simple activity. Okay. Now, here is a very, very important point that I want to discuss today. Okay. If this is what the outcome here is, okay, if this is what the is the outcome here. Then we need to fundamentally think about how are we approaching our job search. Okay. Why? Because if I look at different kind of job opportunities, you know, if I look at, let's say a tech recruiters job option also. Okay. What a recruiter is doing in, let's say maybe, a maybe, you know, a bank is going to be very different than that of what a recruiter is going to do in, let's say a product based IT company. And the job of the recruiter in, let's say, maybe in a manufacturing company is going to be very different than that of what, what that recruiter was doing in an IT company. Forget about that. Forget about that. You know, the recruiter's job from in the same industry, from one company to come to other company also differs. Okay. Same goes with other rules also. If you are someone who is a quality guy, okay, quality analyst, then quality analyst work in, uh, uh, let's see, SDFC bank is going to be very different than that of what is, what people are doing in Kotak bank. Okay. What a quality analyst is doing in one project of Infosys is going to be very different than that of other project of Infosys. Right. So if this is the case, then you cannot have one resume that is applying with help of which you are applying for job opportunities all job opportunities. Okay. Because when you are doing this, there is a very strong chance that your resume is never going to meet, uh, with, I mean, it's not, it's never going to get, um, uh, a match from the job description of the rule on offer. Okay. So now you have two choices to make here. Okay. You, you have two choices to make here. I'm going to talk about these choice. Number one, is that you can continue to work the way you're working right now. You continue to apply for hundreds of companies and hope that maybe, you know, there are three or four companies that are giving you a shortlist. The problem with this approach is that this shortlist typically the, from the three or four companies that are this coming, it is going to come from those companies, which you may have applied with because these were your safe options. Okay. And the problem with that approach is that when you see that, you know, you applied for hundreds of great companies and you got back from just one company that two, you are not very excited about, you'll not, you'll not plan for the interview and all of those things in a, in a structured fashion for these, for that interview. Why? Because you are not motivated. And when that happens, you sometimes end up getting rejected from even that company also. Okay. Now, what is the problem with this approach is that while it looks harmless to us right now, uh, the back of the mind of the human is not designed in that way. Okay. It doesn't like rejections. I mean, if we go thousands and thousands of years back, uh, people, like you and I, we did not used to stay in front of a computer like this. We did not have phones in our hands, right? And we used, people used to stay in tribes. People used to stay in a close knitted group of people. And if anybody made any mistake, anybody did anything wrong, then they used to be uh, exiled from that community, exiled from that tribe. And, uh, uh, and it was almost certain that this person who has been exiled from that community is going to die because of some uh, predator that is going to hunt upon him or some disease is going to you know take him down uh, or he doesn't have simply food or maybe you know water to take care of himself right so um so that's how people live for thousands and thousands of years and that's the reason our uh you know the back of the mind has uh, doesn't like so it, its survival instinct doesn't like rejections the moment you start getting rejections after rejections after rejections it will make up stories in your head and tell, tell you that, you know, uh, maybe your current job is also okay. Okay. It'll say that, you know, maybe this is not the right time to look for a job. The job market is very tough. It's okay. You're not getting opportunity because maybe, you know, the job markets are bad. The job markets are bad, right? Or it'll tell you something else that, you know, yes, your manager is toxic, but in which company the manager is not toxic in every company, the manager is toxic. So let's live the way we are living right now as well. Yeah. So these are the kind of thoughts that start coming to your head and they will pull you away from your job search. So that's the one, that's one way of doing it. That's how typically most of the people are looking for a job. And there is choice number two that I'm giving you today. I'll tell you exactly how the choice number two works as well. Okay. Number one is that you filter basis your career positioning statement, the positioning statement that we just spoke about. 
you give yourself a permission to reject those applications that might not fit into your narrative and might not fit into what where where you, where you want to work next okay you filter the basis the kind of role that you're targeting the kind of industry you're targeting kind of location that you're targeting the kind of type of company you're targeting okay if you're targeting let's say maybe startups it's okay to leave you know an opportunity no matter how lucrative it is uh, from let's say a bigger company even if it is coming at a higher package it's fine right so you are giving yourself a permission to to reject those uh, companies okay that's one number two is once you have done that let's learn to customize those job, those job applications this is extremely important okay the customization to start with is going to take a little bit of time i i agree with you that it is going to take let's say maybe 10 to 15 minutes of your time okay but but as you start customizing your application for each and every application each and every regime, um, opening then it's the customization time is going to go from 10 to 15 minutes to 5 to 10 minutes okay i'm going to help you here with how do you customize that 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 uh, resume as well okay so and and see and the good part about this customization piece is that you know when you keep customizing your resume here and there you'll have more time to look at your resume you'll have more time to reflect upon how good or bad your resume is okay so when you do that when you do that that is where you you you, you will create the interview answers you will create the best kind of narratives about those interview points in your head and what will happen is that when you are going for an interview call, in an interview, you will realize that these answers are coming automatically to you. Why? Because you have gone through these interview, these resume pointers again and again, again and again, while you are applying for one or the other job opportunities. Okay. Now, how do you do that? See, uh, in the age of AI, I would say it is very easy to do that, to be very honest. Okay. First is, I'm going to give you a resume template. That's your bonus, bonus number one that we had promised to you. Okay. And I'll show you exactly, you know, uh, why this resume format is so effective. You know, I've used, I've created this, this resume format for, I've been using it. Uh, so I also, you know, help people in writing resumes. So we give that, that service and almost all of our resumes have been created on this, um, this resume template. Just give me a second. I'll just maybe um, download it and download it and put it here. Okay. I've just given that on the chat. You can just download it from here. Okay. That's one. And second, I'm going to also give you some, some referral messages, some, some messages which are going to help you. Some AI prompts which are going to help you in writing, rewriting your resume pointers. Okay. So just give me a second. I'll just maybe uh, just go here. Just give me a second, guys. Okay. So if I look at, so I'll just maybe, uh, just give me a second, guys. I'll, I'll just remove his personal information, which is not the right thing to do. Just give me a second, guys. Okay, I think I've just removed most of the points, which all the confidential information before showing it to you. So this is on the resume that we created for, for one of the guys. He is based out of Canada. Okay, so he has used exactly the same format. And if you look at this 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 resume, it it basically talks very clearly about what this person is getting into. Like, I mean, what is his career summary? What is the certification that he has worked upon? What is what exactly is his work experience? Okay, in his area. And what, is, what are his achievements, where all he has worked so far, and what are his achievements, his studies, and all of those things, and what are his interests, all of those kind of things. Like, it's a simple format, but this resume makes sure that everything that you've written are written in such a language, which is super duper easy to use. Super easy to use. Okay. Um, and I want you guys to also use either maybe the template that I've given to you, or maybe a template which is very, very easy to use, that very easy to read. The objective of your resume has to be, has to be, uh, to to make sure that you know it is being read by people, uh, quickly like this. The summary acts as a hook, 
which talks about you know your jobs and responsibilities in such a way and it is optimized to the to the job description in such a way that it acts acts as a hook and the recruiter should say or the hiring manager should say that wow this is something that we are looking for let 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 us go through his resume in in, in more detail okay so that's one thing okay once you have done that once you have done that then second thing i'm going to tell you is that just give me a second hmm second thing that that you're going to do is and i'm going to give you this this document also you're going to use these ai prompts to rewrite each and every specific bullet point okay make summary and then maybe you know rewrite any job so bullet point that you want to write um uh, specific bullet point in, in a format that is going to help you in making the, the biggest impact that you can make okay i've used the, some of these bullet points in my own use cases and i think these most of these works just fine and you can use them as it is the way i've given it to you okay i'm just forwarding it to you guys right here on this chat just give me a second and please download it and save it in save it for your future references because they're going to save you a lot of time okay now the next point is okay i'm going to go ha huh, here okay so please learn to customize the resumes this 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 is an ask that you cannot miss okay and what it is going to result in is that you know you when you do that because you have less number of companies to apply uh you will apply to just one company per day okay on an average one company per day which is result into you you applying for 7 to 10 jobs per week if you can't apply every single day you don't have that bandwidth you can just save those companies at some place and you can just apply them in bulk and it is not going to take a lot of time trust me see 7 to 10 jobs means 7 into 10 it is going to take you 70 minutes even if let's say i take maybe extra buffer it is going to take you 90 minutes in a week okay in a week it is going to take you only 90 minutes and i'm sure if we are serious about making our job search work for us then we can definitely give one and half to two hours of our time in our in customizing our application okay this 70 to 10 jobs per week is going to give you 30 to 40 job applications per month and this 40 30 to 40 job applications per month is going to give you at least 8 to 10 job shortlist the reason for that is you are you are doing what 99% of the people are not doing it you are customizing every single one of your application to make sure that you know uh it speaks the language of that that job description okay so now um i have asked here okay okay can i get a commit from commitment from all of you that you know henceforth because i've given you the right tools i've given you the right understanding of how the the, the entire thing works can i get a commitment from you that you know you will be making this choice number 2 for applying for jobs if the answer is yes please write i, I am committed on the comment box The answer is yes. Please write. I am committed on the comment box. Yes. Cool. Thank you, Jagdish, for taking this initiative. Ansh, absolutely no. Specifically for the kind of experience you have, Ansh, you will have to customize your resume. You'll have to apply to actually less number of companies. i'm telling you but i but i can give you an alternative okay but i can give you an alternative at the start i mentioned to all of you guys that you need to make an investment of, of your time or your money upon yourself okay what i want you guys to do is to not apply to hundreds of job, job opportunities on your own just like this mindlessly because because it is not it is not going to take you anywhere instead you can you can delegate it to ai okay you can delegate to ai and how you can do it is, do, do it is that there is a there, so there is a tool called as loop cv okay i'm not give a going to give a demo of that tool because i'm not associated with them okay you can go to you can take help of loop cv you can just search for loop loop cv on uh, google you'll be able to find it and what loop cv can do for you is that and people have gotten considerable success uh, with this tool i mean that's what at least i here from most of the people you know who have been using this tool um is that it is going to apply for companies which are matching exactly your your profile i mean your resume on your behalf whenever it sees that there is an opportunity out there in the market in any of the job portals it is going to do it on your behalf 
and it is also going to give you an email that loop cv has applied on your behalf for some xyz company on its own so you can delegate it in that way it's it's going to be paid it's going to be paid i'm telling you upfront okay but but this is how it is murtaza see either you can i mean uh keep on applying on your own it's going to be free <laughs> okay or maybe you can delegate that to someone else for a small fee that they might be charging to you that's how it works okay if something that is going to give you so much value then naturally you know it's 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 not going to be free it's a, so that's how it is but i mean if this is how we want to do it okay but what i want you guys to do is to if you are as far as your time and energy should be concerned that you will always be better off by making this choice number 2 always trust me on this because I, you know i run a community called as phoenix growth academy in which i have more than 100 people uh, to whom i personally guide through group coaching sessions and job selling sessions and all and every single person is making this 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 choice and the people who to whom we have onboarded since since uh, you know april i think the people from april till november all of these people have gotten an opportunity in one or the other company why because they were direct they were specific to their own job opportunities out there okay okay uh so i'm i'm super happy that some of you guys have at least you know taken this commitment that you're going to take this choice because trust me you, you use this you know method for another 30 days it is going to completely change the way you you are actually getting those opportunities out there okay now i'll shift my focus from here to um the next part of it okay so so far i have spoken to you guys yes yes and that's what i said see the thing is that you know if you are opt customizing your application you you automatically stand out among all the other people because trust me 99% of the people do not customize their resume they just simply apply with one single resume that they have in their own, uh, they have with themselves okay so you are already in top 1% when you are customizing your application for a specific for a specific application and the need for customization is even more for people who have more than 10 12 14, like 13 14 15 years of experience for them they have to customize the application if you are just applying in bulk just like a fresher it's not going to take you anywhere because people are more specific about making an investment on a person who has more experience okay because it's a higher experience and also they cannot make a mistake of hiring at that level because it is going to get percolated to all the other people all the other team members as well i see uh, so i don't have any percentage criteria on this i don't use any of these to tools that give you any percentage match okay so when you when i say optimize it you you can use those uh, uh, you can use those uh, prompts that i've given to you and okay i'll if you guys need what i can do is that i can give you maybe a, a a free idea here okay you don't have to be like 100% like matching one thing with with the other what you can do is you can go go to a tool called as word clouds okay word clouds just maybe select any kind of shape here this this looks like a bad shape let, let me select a different shape here this one okay and let me also maybe change this these font because these are not visible uh colors okay let's change this yellow to maybe red okay and apply so what you can do is you can go to let's say let's say somebody is looking for a uh, can you can you give me a role for which i can do this this activity can you guys give me a role just give me a role whoever gives the first i'm going to just do that exercise for that that particular role just give me a role i'm going to quickly financial analyst okay let's move do it for financial analyst okay financial analyst jobs okay now to so google has some of the jobs about financial analysis um let me look at some of the companies that might be hiring okay jp morgan is hiring financial analyst it's a, it's a well known company so i'm going to just take the example of jp morgan i am going to just copy this job job description from here till 
here, okay, from here to here. And I'm gonna simply do a very simple exercise. Just please focus here. Please focus here. Go to word list, click on extract word from text, okay? Then paste this entire job description here, okay? And click on apply. Once you do that, it is gonna give you, it is gonna give you, you know, um, a nice word cloud of all the keywords. If you see there, to the, high, the higher the font size of, of a keyword, the, the bigger the frequency is. Like financial keyword, keyword has to be there. The analysis has to be there. Finance has to be there. Responsible, budgeting, skills, reporting, management. And what typically uh, the uh, ATSs do is that they kind of, you know, uh, uh, categorize these words. For example, financial and financial is going to come in, come, come under one category. Like analysis, analytics, analytical is going to come under one category. So this is how it kind of works out, right? Reporting, management, FP&A, business, these kind of keywords are coming there, right? You can also check the exact frequency by clicking on word list and click on edit. See, analysis coming is coming five times. Business is coming five times. Okay, F financial is coming five times. Across is coming four times. Like, right? so these kind of keywords are coming. So what you can do is, you can create a similar kind of word cloud for your own resume also and see if these two are matching. If they are, they're not matching, you can just, you know, maybe take some of these high frequency words and you can put them in your resume somewhere to improve the, um, uh, you know, keyword match from between the JD and their, in, in their role. Okay, I don't use uh, any of these premium tools. I'll tell you very honest, the reason for that is, I mean, in my experience of, you know, of doing that with some of the students, what has happened is, that initially that their score was, so they were getting some 30, 40% score. Okay. And the moment they bought the premium subscription of, of that tool, uh, immediately after making just one small change, they were able to get 70, 80%, uh, 70 to 80% off match. So I'm not sure if these tools actually work. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that clarity. Uh, so uh, is it, is it clear? Can we move to the next part now? Is it clear to you guys? What I just kind of, you know, the quick exercise that I did here. Yes. Cool. I've just given you the link also. You can just copy and, you know, save this link also to your own use case. Okay. Now I'll move from here to different tools. So, so I'll just quickly talk about a few things now. So far, if I talk about automating job search, if I talk about interview shortlist, I have spoken about applying for jobs. Okay. Because applying for jobs, knowing how to apply for jobs is extremely important. Okay. Now I'm going to shift my focus to two different areas. One is how do you get referrals that I'm going to cover in networking? And two is how do we become more visible and how do you, how do you improve our personal branding? Okay. Why? Because uh, I know a lot of people that have gotten hired at least in 2022 and 2023 uh, because they got inbound job opportunities from recruiters. Recruiters themselves reached out to them uh, because they thought that their profile is, is a good match. Okay, so I'm going to talk about both of these opportunities one by one. See, uh, now why this personal branding or why this visibility is important? There are two reasons for it. Number one is, like I mentioned, um, so as per research that was done by LinkedIn, 87% of the people who are not looking to hire active, not looking to get hired actively, for example, I'm not looking to get hired actively right now in any of the companies. So 87% of those people are open to have conversation with recruiter if recruiter reaches out to them and says that you know we have an op opportunity which might be uh, for which you might be a great fit let's connect for a quick call if they get this kind of an email message from a recruiter there is a strong chance there is it says 87 percent like it is an out of 100 chance that people are going to respond Okay. What does this mean? That there are people who are getting hired even when they are not looking for jobs. And there are us who are looking for jobs actively and we are still not getting hired. Why? Because we are not leveraging this opportunity. I'll give you an example of one of our, you know, some of the person with, with, with whom I had interacted a lot. And, you know, I'll tell you how exactly his entire piece kind of you know, turns out to be. Okay. I, you know, I used to get, get all of the, lot of these opportunities when I was looking for jobs. Maybe I'll quickly show you that piece as well. Um, so him, okay, I'll show you exactly his profile to you, okay? So if, if I talk about Kumar Utsav, okay? 
So when he shifted from Whitehead Junior after doing his full time, you know, two years of work uh, uh, in in Whitehead Junior, and it got acquired by uh, this company um, by Byju's, that is where he shifted from there to uh, Razorpay as an associate director of product. Okay, it was a great opportunity. Super happy. I mean, uh, that you know he is in Razorpay, and he also planned to shift from from Mumbai to Bangalore, start a family. And and you know work there for at least three to four years. This was his plan, okay. And uh, four years of working in Razor Pay, a, re a recruiter, a London-based recruiter, reaches out to him uh, via LinkedIn. That you know, uh, I think we have a perfect role for you in Meta. Would you want to? Would you be willing to uh, consider? I mean, I mean, shifting from that that place to uh, UK. And he said, "Why not? Let's have a conversation." I mean, I mean, after, after all, Meta is Meta, and this was before. Uh, the layoffs started okay so so he started having the conversation with him round one round two round three all the round three four and then the, all the five rounds were done and then he eventually got hired for, for product management role in meta now there are hundreds and thousands of people who are looking to get hired who will die to get hired on a product growth role in meta but there is a guy who has no plan to get into any such company such as meta but he gets hired for that role that's the power of your personal branding that's the power of I mean, th this guy actually is known for uh, his product skills and all. You, if you go through, I mean, he he is known well in product community. Okay, so that's what is the power of the personal branding. Okay, uh, so there are three different channels for getting job jobs in in current job opportunities. There is uh, like you applying for jobs that you already know, in which we kind of did some refi uh, refinements. Number two is you get inbound job opportunities on your own, and number three is that you start getting referrals. Okay, and why this piece? Why this getting this inbound job opportunities is extremely important. Why making your own personal brand, as far as your career brand is important, is because as you progress along in your career, as you move along in your career, the opportunity block, the opportunity pyramid is going to become smaller, 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 smaller. Okay, why? Because of because of a very simple reason. Because of a very simple example, nobody, no company hires, uh, puts up puts up a post on Nokri.com or on or on LinkedIn jobs that they are hiring a CEO or they are hiring a CTO, right? These are the people that are hired via headhunters or these are the people who are hired via close connections only. There's no other way of hiring those people, okay? For example, I mean, uh, so unless you have that kind of a brand, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to get those opportunities as you hit a plateau. And this is one of the biggest reason. A lot of people in job search, they grow well. And after a certain point, they just, their curve just gets flattened and their curve remains exactly like this throughout their career after that. Why? Because they are not able to create a personal career brand out of uh, you know themselves. Uh, now, as far as creating your personal career brand is concerned, it's 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 an entire session in, in itself. Okay. But I'm gonna teach you something which is gonna help you in getting more recruiters to your to your uh, profile. Okay. So if I look at uh, your LinkedIn profile. Okay, personal brand doesn't mean LinkedIn profile, by the way. Okay, so it can be created in multiple ways, in multiple channels, multiple you know, fashions. You know, me writing articles for business magazines, that's part of me making my personal brand. Okay, uh, so, so, but LinkedIn is one of the channels which I'm going to talk about because LinkedIn is very important as far as your own job search is concerned. Okay, so there are three very, very important aspects to it. Number one is that you should be searchable. If somebody searches for the keyword specific to your own profile, for which you are trying to get hired. Somebody searches for the role for which you're trying to get hired. Then if your name is not coming at the top, then you are anyway invisible to the recruiters. Nobody's going to come to you. It's as simple as that. Number two is that the moment you are visible, the moment somebody finds you in search, whatever they're able to see, that has to be so compelling that they should immediately click on it and say that, okay, let me just quickly go through the profile of this person. Okay. Then number three is, you need to be approachable. When I, when, I, when I say approachable, the moment they come to your profile, they should say, wow, let me just quickly connect with him. Where is his email ID? Or where is his phone number? Or where is his, I mean, how do I connect with this guy? Okay, it cannot be like, you know, the other person comes to your profile, your profile is locked and they can't do anything except just maybe just close the, the, the tab and leave your profile. Okay. Now, now, so I cannot cover everything here. So I'm going to cover one very important part of it, then that is called as how do you make your profile more clickable? Okay. So when I say clickable, typically this is what the hiring managers see when they searched 
for you on LinkedIn. Okay. Like they're looking at your headshot, your name, your title, your location, uh, where, where do you work right now? And what are your shared connections? Okay. Um, now shared connections can be improved by sending more and more requests to the people who are in your field. Work experience, you can't change because whatever your work experience is, it is how it is. Okay. It's, it's there. Location, you cannot change. I mean, because for whichever location you are trying to get hired, it has to be this location. Headshot, of course, you can improve. You can kind of make sure that your headshot is more visible so that your recall increases. Whatever name is given to you, it is given. You cannot change your name. Last piece that is remain here, re remaining here is your title. Title is a text field in which you can write whatever you want to write. But if you are not making it impactful, it is going to look exactly similar to the title that other people have. I'll show you the what is the fundamental problem I have with people when, when they create update their LinkedIn profile, right? So if you look at, if I search for data scientist, okay, again, the way I was just giving you an example, if I look at people here, okay, you'll see that everybody is writing in exactly the same fashion. Snehal says she's a data scientist at Clarient. Mona says data scientist at JP Morgan. Data scientist risk analytics. Data scientist at Adelvis. Data scientist at Light. I mean, if you also write it, write it in exactly this way, how would you differentiate yourself? There are like 20 different people. How do I know like to, to which person I, I should go? Okay. What other people are doing is the problem with people is that they are just latching upon the brand equity of their current company. What they are saying is that, you know, I've worked as a data scientist in, uh, um, you know, um, let's say, um, uh, uh, Yes Bank or Edelweiss Financial Services. And that's the reason you should hire me in your new company. Likewise, this guy is saying, Jimit, uh, this is saying that he is a data scientist in Colgate Palmolive, and because he is um, a triple ID Bombay or I don't know, I think Bangalore, triple ID Bangalore graduate, and this is in they, they should hire. This is the fundamental problem. You know, this, this is not a differentiator, and I'll tell you how you can create a differentiator for your own use case. Okay. Um, I think this should be title. Yeah, title. Okay. So like, like I said, everyone's headline is same and people do not create their own brand equity. And please look at this piece very, very carefully. This is important. And I'll tell you what a great headline uh, typically has. It has a job title the way you, you have seen other people write, writing the job title. It has some relevant industry keywords and it has a unique value proposition that you bring to the table. I'll tell you how exactly you can create it. Okay. If I look at, so, so this entire example, entire, entire thing becomes something like this job title, keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, and unique value proposition. Okay. And, uh, and uh, if I give you some examples, how it is going to come out as is that if somebody is, let's say a data analyst. Okay. I think I'm giving the data analyst example because somebody is here, a data analyst and maybe people who are financial analysts, they can also look at it. Um, it's going to be like this. So instead of writing data analyst at JPMC, you can make it something like this. You know, you are a data analyst at JPMC. That's great. And some keywords for Python, SQL, Tableau, because these are the keywords that are more prevalent on the job descriptions of your role. Then a unique value proposition that you bring to the table. This guy says that I help, this is by the way, an actual example of a student of mine. I help companies use big data to tell stories that boost consumer attention. Yeah. So now this guy is saying that I, I do not just make reports. Okay. I mean, my job, my job role goes beyond just making reports. You know, I, I create data in such a way that companies are able to save, uh, are able to retain 60% of um, the customers who are about to leave the bank. And that's a serious, serious achievement. Okay. Uh, I'll give an example. Somebody says marketing manager at credit. Marketing is a very abused word and marketing is, I mean, there are hundred rules inside marketing. So if, instead of writing this, if you write it in this way, marketing manager at cred, then his keywords are SEO, organic growth, and social listening. So immediately I'll know that he's an SEO guy. Immediately I know that, you know, this guy, we can hire him if we want our page to rank at the top page, at the first or second page of, of, of the of these options. Okay. Then last piece is I help startups add 25k users in 12 months without ads. Cool. Okay. There are other examples as well. If somebody's graphic designer is Zomato, it is going to become something like this. Okay. I'm not going to get into more details on this, but I'm going to give you a tool that is going to help you in creating a headline like this in more in less than two minutes. 
okay in less than two minutes so i'm going to show it to you exactly how does this work and it's going to help you in making a similar kind of use case for yourself as well okay um just give me a second and then i'm going to share it with you okay just give me a second i'll just quickly so i have an old resume of mine i'm going to use that old resume to to use this okay Uh, there's some problem. Just give me a second, guys. Yeah, I think I have it with me now. Okay. What I've done is that I have used, I have used my career positioning statement at the start. I'm going to use ChatGPT here. Okay. My career positioning statement at the start um, to tell ChatGPT this is what I'm looking for. And then I'm telling where exactly do I work. And I've just given ChatGPT my resume, entire resume till here. And then I'm, I'm asking ChatGPT that basis ever given information, please create a LinkedIn headline for me using this framework. The framework that I just showed to you. I'm going to give this framework to you. Just give me a few seconds, okay? So if I hit submit button, it's going to give me an answer. So it says senior product manager at Fintech startup, although it is access bank. So ChatGPT can be wrong sometimes. Product management, uh, merchant acquisition, digital transformation. These are my keywords. Driving 13% uh, increase in digital adoption and all those things. I can maybe get more uh, versions of it. Okay. And I can do a mix and match also. I mean, I can just pick all of these options and then I can just create one for, for my own and which is going to be very quick. See, this time it's just senior product manager at access bank. It's, it's the right thing, right? And then the, this is the impact that I have laid down so far, right? So I can just quickly pick this line and pick the previous line and I can create one such line for myself as well in less than a minute's time. Okay. So because I think we have taken a lot of time, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you right, right away. But is it okay if you guys create this for yourself once the session is over? Is it okay if you if you can create this for yourself once the session is over? I've just given you the exact uh, prompt that will help you in creating a, a you know a LinkedIn headline in less than a minute. Well, how about other people? Can I get a yes or a no from the other people who are who are here in the session today? Yes. Okay. Awesome. 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 Perfect. 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 Let me now, okay, because see, the thing is, you know, as far as your LinkedIn is concerned, LinkedIn is huge. I mean, uh, so uh, by the way, I mean, I'll just talk about it in, in next few minutes as well. I mean, I, I literally thought about it. Like, you know, if I were to help people like you with end-to-end -end job search, like how many of the sessions I'm typically going to need to make sure that you have gotten every single tool and everything. And I came down to the, the smallest number as eight sessions. Is something that I required. And out of these eight sessions, two sessions are different, are, <clears throat> are completely on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is such a powerful tool, such an important tool as far as your own job search is concerned. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about it in just next next few minutes. Okay. Give me a few, few minutes here. <clears throat> okay, so so this is how you can work on your title. This is important. And of course, the other people other parts of your 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 profile as well. Okay. Now I'm going to come to the most important part of today's conversation. Okay. This is something that is going to completely blow your mind. Okay. Because that's, I'm saying this from my, my experience. And this is something that, <clears throat> that has personally given me the best results as far as my mind job search is concerned. <clears throat> okay. Just give me a second guys. I mean, there's some problem in the throat. Okay. So before networking, I want to show, uh, tell you something very important, very, very important. Okay. If anything that that will have the biggest impact on your job search in the next 30 days, it has to be this part of the entire conversation. Okay. So last year in January, when I uh, visited, so when I was invited as a speaker for business world, 
So they had a roundtable conference in which I was invited along with a lot of the CXOs and a lot of the people who were working in those companies. I met a guy whose name is Manish Rati. Okay. This guy is uh, head of digital initiative in a company called as Bla Blackhawk Mitchell Fund. And <clears throat> if any of you guys are from finance background, you will be able to understand that uh, BlackRock is one of the biggest company on of mutual fund, not just in India, but also in the world. It's it's a big company, okay? And um, I had a nice time having conversation with him and I talked about with him um, about a project that I was working on. I'm working on basically, and, and the project is called as Branch of the Future. Okay, that, that is something that I've been heading at, at, at Access Bank. And um, once the session was done on 19th, once that was done on 19th Jan, on 20th Jan, I, uh, in the morning, I sent him a message. <clears throat> it says that I had a great time interacting with you at the round table. I was truly impressed by your insights on digital transformation, sending you a connect request. Would love to continue the conversation and learn more about your experience. Within a minute's time, he responds. Likewise, Vijay, great to connect with you and look forward to catching up again. Maybe someday we will also learn to create a digital mutual fund branch of the future too. See, I would have sent him a request. He would have still accepted it. It with even if it's I would have sent him without any personalization message, personalized message. But will I have made an impact on this person? The answer is a big no. Okay. After that, I had few conversations with this guy because I had some doubts, some questions, and all. And he, Manish, is still a very strong connect. And if someday I decide to start looking for a job, and I come to know that you know BlackRock is hiring for a particular role for which I think I am a good fit. If I reach out to Manish and say, hey, Manish, uh, I see that there is this role that is that your company is hiring. Uh, would you be, um, maybe, you know, uh, put a word in, you know, to the hiring manager that I would be interested in this role. And I am 100% confident that Manish will not only talk to this person and he's going to advocate for me so that I can at least get an interview call. At least an interview call. And that's the power of you sending a personalized message to people. And this is one of the biggest reasons, you know, whenever I connect with people, I, <clears throat> you know, if I go to my, my own LinkedIn as well here, this is like one of the problems that I have with people, you know, if I go to my network, you know, I, I, I think more than some 80, 90, 100 re requests pending. And there are a lot of people who are sending these requests. The problem is that I don't have time to kind of go through and, you know, you know, um, approve each one of them like one by one. The problem is that people, you know, send these kind of requests without any messages, any, any of that sort. Now, if everybody's sending me messages like this, then what happens is that, I mean, I, I I'm, I'm not able to kind of, you know, connect with most, most of these people. Okay. And of, of course, I'm going to connect with some of those people who I feel that, you know, they are there at a CXO level and let me connect with them. But other, other people, going through each one of these profiles one by one and accept clicking on accept 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 for no reason it, it it's a waste of time for me okay unless a person is sending me a personalized message with a specific ask that he has in his mind and which has my interest as well right and this is one of the biggest reason whenever i connect with people i'll show something to you uh, uh just give me a second guys i think there's some problem that has happened i'm surprised i mean I had a pinned post which has gotten removed from here. Just give me a second. <clears throat> okay. This is, so I, I had a pinned note which kind of got removed. I'll show it to you. So this is so whenever I connect with people on LinkedIn, so this, this is how I send each and every one of those people a connection, a, a personalized note how I'm able to send these personalized messages to these people because I am targeting a specific set of people, specific kind of people with whom I'm trying to have these conversations. Each and every one of these people. See, this is how the entire piece is kind of you know, getting worked out. Now, in your case also, when you are making this career clarity statement, when you're shortlisting the people with whom you want to have the conversations, please send them a personalized note. Okay. It could be anything. It could be about, you know, maybe a common interest, maybe uh, it could be about, you know, something that they have posted in the past. It could be anything. Okay, please have a look at that. So that's extremely important. And number two is that I'm going to share this networking formula with you, which will help you in connecting with those people. Okay, so I call this 10x 
formula is 10x because it goes with my 10x growth academy. And um, uh, so what you're going to do is that you're going to send a personalized note. This goes without saying. Now, please focus on this piece, okay? Because if you miss out on, on this, you, you miss out on this. And this is going to completely change your referral game because you're going to get almost a 100% response using this. Okay. Now, how do you send personalized notes note to people? Uh, huh. So that I've already explained. Okay. So once you do that, either your, your accept is, request is going to get accepted and you get a response to note or your request is going to get accepted and you are not going to get any response. In either of the case, what you need to do is that you need to set, to get, try to get on a one-to-one -one call with these people. Okay. Now you might be wondering that here, why, so this is a, this is such a big ask, you know, getting on a one-to-one -one call with a person, you know, why would a, any, any person will come on, come on a one-to-one -one call with me? That could be an immediate doubt in your head. So let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. Okay. First of all, why one-to-one -one call? See, uh, if you write a text to someone, people are reading so much text nowadays across like their emails, their uh, word documents, their LinkedIn posts, you know, messages across. There's so many, so much text that this text message that you have sent, people will forget about in in a in 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 less than a day. Okay, that's that's the reason there is a value in you having one-to-one -one conversation with with people because when you have one-to-one -one conversation with people, uh, pe the recall is much bigger than that of the kind of recall that you can have with them um, when you're sending them just a text. Okay. Second is when people get on a one-to-one -one call, they share a lot of insider information and that insider information is gold when you're trying to get hired for a particular role. Okay. Now, why would they accept your, your, your get on one-to-one -one call request is see, <clears throat> instead of making it as a favor that, you know, I'm looking to get hired for this role, this job, uh, can you give me a referral? Uh, let's you know, get on a call, one-to-one -one basis. Instead of writing something like this, what you need to do is you need to write, ask them for an advice or a feedback on something. And trust me, it's human psychology. Everybody likes to get, uh, likes to give advices. Okay, I mean, uh, just I think, uh, like I think, I think, I think a month back when there was uh, this. Uh, um, Sorry, few months back when there was uh, this uh, World Cup, I saw that so there was an uncle who were who were in his fifties. You know, he was literally telling in in a Panwala shop in front of Panwala shop that you know this is how Kohli should have played in, in the ball in which he got uh, out. And and I was pretty sure that you know this guy has not even picked up a bat, bat in the past twenty years. Okay, so there are people who do not know anything about <laughs> how to play cricket, and they are advising Virat Kohli on how he should have played that ball, right? This is how people are. You know, people like to give advices. You will see there are a lot of people fighting across Twitter, Instagram, all of these places, giving their expert opinion, even without knowing a lot of other factors that might have been involved about those things, right? So if the moment you ask people for a particular advice, people most of the time applies for it. Okay. And how you need to write for it is that you know you can just simply introduce yourself and say that thank you so much for you know accepting my request. And um, my name is Vijay and I'm on to these three things, one, two, three. And I saw that, you know, you are from this background and I was quite inspired by you doing some X, Y, Z things. And I was wondering if you can advise me on a quick 15 minutes call, okay, on this specific top topic. Um, and, and it's completely okay if you don't respond to this message because I know that, you know, you are busy and uh, I'll just do a quick follow up after three days uh, to make sure that you have read my message. If you can send a message, some message which goes something like this, then most of the time people, people respond to that message to get on a one-to-one -one call with them. And this is one of the ways, one of the person who is in our community, I'll just show it to you, this, this guy's name. I'll show you it live actually. You know, I just got his name here. Uh, so this guy got an opportunity this um, <clears throat> from a different company. So this guy says, just give me a second. This guy says that, you know, you remember the job post we, uh, on LinkedIn we spoke about? I reached out to him using your LinkedIn message template. I ended up connecting with him and had a series of conversations. Thrilled to share that I just received an offer email with a CTC of 65% hike and would be joining AP Rural, Bank, Rural Lending at Access Bank. So these are the kind of results people can get if they are taking these kind of things seriously. Okay. Now I'll please come back to this, this piece again. Okay. So please get on a call with him. 
even if let's say he has not responded to you, you can always send a thank you message with a similar kind of message. I'll share you the template also that you're going to use. Okay. That you're going to use uh, to reach out to people. If they reply to you, get on a call. If they don't reply to you, then instead of replying to the uh, through messages yet, please engage with the content that this person is making. Because everybody, you know, likes to read what other people have to say about your uh, post. That's extremely important. Okay. Because everybody, you know, uh, wants to understand like what other people are thinking about what, what my opinion is. Okay. I mean, even today, uh, in my post, sometimes I get more than, I mean, 20, 25 comments. Uh, I still go through each and every point one by one. Right. So when you engage with a meaningful, um, you know, opinion on a particular post, that is going to give you a big, big, big recall. Okay. If you get a response, that is where you can try to get on a, on, on a call with that person. Okay. That's, that's your second liver. And if let's say you don't get a response from there, then you need to use a ninja technique. I'll, I'll show you exactly how this technique works. Okay. Let's assume for a minute that Vineet is trying to connect, trying to get a referral from Ansh. Okay. When he's trying to get a referral from Ansh, what happens is when he sends a request to Ansh, Ansh accepts a request. When he sends a message for a call, when it doesn't respond, and when it comments on a post that was made by Ansh or a comment that is made by Ansh and he has just given his response to Ansh comment, when it uh, Ansh still doesn't respond. Okay. Now, what Vinit is going to do is that because Vinit has gone to his profile a few times, Vinit has looked at his work, Vinit knows who this person is, Vinit is going to go to his profile. Okay. And endorse him for a particular skill that is relevant to his own role. Okay. The moment Vinit does that, Anch is going to get a notification on his a notification bar, which will say that, you know, Vinit has endorsed you for some XYZ skills. And at the bottom of it, there'll be a call to action. It will say, say thank you. The moment Anch hit clicks on this, say thank you, immediately a message will come to Vinit. And from there, Vinit can take the conversation forward. Okay. This technique works most of the time. Provided your LinkedIn profile is optimized. Okay. Then last but not the least, an extremely important point is that if you still got didn't don't get response, although I have not seen people going till this level and not getting responses, you can now do a follow-up with that person that you know you had sent a message to them. Okay. So instead of just sending message, 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 messages, what you're doing is that you are trying to reach out to people 360 degree. Okay. And just to understand why, whether this works or not, I spoke with a good friend of mine. She works as a talent acquisition manager in Microsoft. I told her, I showed it to her. I showed that, you know, somebody's doing this much of amount of effort and reaching out to you. Would you be willing to maybe give him a chance? She said that, you know, if people are being persistent, most of the time they end up giving them a call, try to understand their profile and maybe, you know, uh, help them in landing an interview call. Okay, so this is how the, the, the entire piece works. So I want you guys to use this method, not just you know sending a message and asking for a referral. Okay, create a deep connection and use this networking template to ensure that you are getting those opportunities via referrals from the recruiters or from the hiring managers. Not okay. Now I'm going to give you something very important. So when you're trying to reach out to people, when you're trying to reach out to people, what will happen is that you know there are some people who will have the biggest impact on, on your uh, job search, on your referrals. Okay. And there are three kinds of people. One is your alumni. Okay. Second is the recruiter himself because recruiter has the need. And third is a person with whom you have worked. No, I mean, who and uh, who person and you have worked with a common employee. I'll give you maybe a quick example of it. I think I've taken a lot of time here. I'll give you a quick example here. Let's say I want to maybe um, get hired for Amazon. Okay, I'll go to my alma mater that is Indian Institute of Management Udaipur, and I'm going to go to my alumni section here. Okay, I'll look at. I mean, you'll be surprised that even if let's say you go to relatively unknown colleges, you will see one of the one of the other alumni working in working in one of these companies. If I look at, I will search for let's say Amazon here. So instead of reaching out to some random person in Amazon, 
see, there are a lot of people. There is Akansha, there is Piyush, there is Pratima, there is Akarsh, there is uh, Sanjula. There are like tens of people who are working in Amazon. I would probably reach reach out to one of these people and ask, tell them that, you know, hey, I saw that, you know, let's say maybe I would go to Akansha's profile. Okay. I'll go to Akansha's profile and I'll see uh, what Akansha is up to. Akansha says she, she's working on product in CX. And I'll tell her that, you know, I saw that you had, a, you had an interesting transition of like working from, let's say, Baiju's to Amazon. You know, it was pretty inspiring. You know, can we, can we have a quick connect? And instead of sending them any Tom, Dick and Harry messages, you please send them these kind of messages. Okay. I'll just send this message, uh, give these messages to you. Okay. See, it says that, you know, came, uh, came across your profile on my feed and noticed that you're also from my college sending you an invite to connect and seek your guidance on this road. And alumni always have a soft corner. Always. Okay. If provided you treat them professionally, you do not take them casually. Okay. And once they connect, accept your request, you send them that this exact thing. And then see. To, even to the alumni, you are sending this specific message. That would you be willing to share some advice on how I, how I can prepare the best to start a career in this? I'm happy to accommodate for your schedule and whatever daytime works for you. Thank you so much. Okay, now, what it does is that it makes it it caught, it catches up the the alumni by surprise. That wow, this person is I mean so respectful. Okay, let me genuinely help this guy. That's how it works. Same goes with another. A recruiter that you all of you guys know same goes with let's say i want to get into amazon i said right i want to get into amazon and i'm gonna look at people i'm gonna look at people who are in amazon okay um and then uh what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna go to all filters here okay i'm gonna go to maybe a past company of mine which is uh Let's say I've worked in Yes Bank in the past. Okay. I'm not sure if there are people who have worked in Yes Bank have gone to Amazon, but let me just maybe try this luck. Okay. Show results. Okay. See, past company is Yes Bank. There's Ipshita, she has worked in Yes Bank. There's Anuradha, she has worked in Yes Bank. See, ex Yes Bank. Okay. Now she is working as a finance manager in Amazon. There is uh, Akshay City. There are a lot of people who have worked in, in, um, Yes Bank in the past and now they work in Amazon. I can literally go to these people and say that, you know, I see that you had a great transition from Yes Bank to Amazon. Even I have similar career aspirations. Can we, uh, I mean, can we run for a quick call to understand exactly how did you do that? Right? So I'm going to just send it to you right now. These referral messages. Guys, please, you know, one thing that I want to tell you guys here is that please do not share this material with anyone else. It's a confidential material. Okay. That we typically used to give to people who are in the community itself, but we have started giving them in, in our uh, sessions as well so that more and more number of people can get can get benefited out of it okay so use these referral templates also in your own use case to get maximum advantages okay now one last thing that i wanted to kind of quickly talk about before i summarize and do all of those things uh, so like i've talked about in this session so far your mindset is a, is a very important uh, part of you making through a successful job search Okay, you need to be, you need to have a, you have a great clarity about what your career goal is, and what do you want to achieve out of this entire exercise. Okay, number two is that clarity is important. Unless you have clarity, you will always be confused. You will always be stressed. Your anxiety will kind of take over your job search. Okay, number three is do not waste your time in applying for jobs, uh, scrolling for jobs one by one. Automate that activity by getting those job opportunities on your email. Okay, number four is. Start applying for less number of companies to get more number of shortlists. You can do that by customizing each and every one of your applications. Okay. You can do, do that by using the templates and everything that I've given to you. And if you want to delegate, you can also delegate it by, by giving it to AI. That's up to you. Okay. Then the fifth point is, please start working on your personal brand. This is going to be the biggest uptick as far as a long-term career is concerned. Unless you have a personal brand, unless you're optimizing LinkedIn profile, inbound people are not going to reach out to you. Inbound opportunities are not come come to you. Last but not the least, take networking seriously. Okay. Make deep and meaningful relations. You know, it, it's okay to connect with very few people. That's going to give you a, a much bigger lever than that of you connecting with hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, there's no meaning in those connections. Okay. Now, Having said that, uh, 
Okay, if you like this entire session, here is a very, very important announcement uh, to uh, that I'm making here is that I'm going to conduct eight similar sessions. The one that I just conducted here, that the one that, that you watched while you know I was giving this session, I'm going to conduct eight different sessions in, in which I'm covering each and everything that is about a job search. Let me just quickly show it to you how this is going to look like. Okay. Um, let me share my mind map that I created for you. So uh, what I've done is that I have created a program called as Career Accelerator Program in which I am going to first give you uh, eight missions. These are going to be these are going to be eight live sessions uh, being taken by me and Prashant, who is my partner. And these sessions, all of these eight sessions, uh, sessions are going to focus on these key important items. Number one is how do you reprogram your mindset? How do you build a new character, a new character sheet? How do you work on your current character? Identify what are your strengths, your weaknesses, and everything else as far as your mindset is concerned and how do you convert that into a growth mindset okay uh, so that's something that we're going to work upon once we have worked upon that we're going to straight get into resume building in which i'm going to help you create a resume in the session itself i'm going to share a blank uh, resume format in which i'm also going to work you are also going to work with me during the session then once this is done, you, we're going to work on LinkedIn profile optimization because this profile optimization is going to help you in getting inbound job opportunities by optimizing your profile, your about me section, your headline, your um, your your highlight section, your headshot, your banner, everything to make sure that your profile looks a premium profile. Then we're going to work on LinkedIn content strategy because unless you are posting content on a regular basis, your a personal, I mean, your personal authority on that subject is going to be questionable. Okay. If you want to create a trustworthy LinkedIn profile, you've got to create content. Uh, being someone who has created con content for millions of viewers, someone who has more than 50,000 followers on LinkedIn, I'm going to teach you how exactly you can also leverage AI to make sure that you are creating a proper content planner. And then you are automating how do you put your job posts on LinkedIn. Fifth is that we're going to work on job search strategy in which I'm going to teach you how do you work on a job search tracker? How do you track your opportunities so that, you know, you have a very, very strong funnel from applying to you getting interview calls. Then sixth, once the, the job search strategy is created, once you start executing that, that job search strategy, once you start getting the job opportunities, the next call is going to happen on interview cracking strategy. The L1 is going to focus on some of the basic behavioral questions followed by some more advanced frameworks will be shared in interview cracking strategy level two. Once these two sessions are over, we will share salary negotiation blueprint. Okay. In this, we're going to do role plays, which will help you in being more comfortable with the salary negotiation round so that you can get the best bang for your buck and you are not leaving money on the table. All of these sessions are going to be live sessions. And if any of you miss out on any of these sessions, don't worry. We are going to record all of these sessions and, and put on our LMS, our um, learning management module, which is going to be accessible via web, via uh, Android app, via iOS app. Okay. Uh, not just that, you know, um, sometimes people have very, very small queries. So, uh, so that, you know, I, I don't want all of you to go through these, um, like two, two and a half hour videos uh, to get these kind of small uh, queries clarified. And for that, I have created bit size information, powerful courses. And there is some misinformation here. There, so, so they're going to be seven powerful courses, which are going to talk about your resume makeover, cover letter, LinkedIn profile optimization, AI content strategy, job search strategy, and interview current strategy, and salary negotiation. All of these courses are going to be part of the bundle that I'm, that I'm going to give to you. Okay. Uh, third, all frameworks, all cheat sheets, everything at one place. You're going to get all of those things once you enroll for this program. Okay, this program uh, is going to start on the dates that are mentioned on the description and make sure that you click on that link and register for this session because it is going to completely change the way you are looking for a job search. Okay, uh, not a job search, but also your interview preparation and salary negotiation. Now, the last and the most important piece is obviously the pricing. The pricing piece is also given on the description. You can check below for the discounts and everything that is there. And you will be completely blown away by the kind of pricing we have kept for this program because the kind of stuff that we have been sharing, we have been sharing literally almost hundreds of hours, hundreds of videos, documents, and templates to help you with your resume, LinkedIn profile, interview prep, selling negotiation. And if you are serious 
about making a career switch in next to next four to six weeks, I want you to enroll for the next 10 X career growth accelerated program. Um, the details again about the registration are in caption Do register. And I'll see you in the next workshop that I'm going to conduct on the dates that are given on the description. I thank you all for watching this session. Uh, I hope I was able to add some value to your profile, add some value to your job search, and I wish you all the very best and hope to listen back from you once you're once you've cracked an offer from one of the other companies. I wish you all the very best.